Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Today is Saturday, October the 20th, 2016. Let's talk about Demetrius Andrade against Walter Kotondokwa. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, this fight might be unbettable, right? I expect the favorite, Andre, to win the fight. However, if I had to make a bet on this fight, because the odds are so lopsided, I would probably lay a little bit of money on the underdog simply to win, right? Why? Because, let's just say, the underdog has a better chance of winning than the line suggests. For me, it would just be an odds play. But let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the fighters, right? So as we watch the fight, we can see a few things to look for. Now, Cotton Dokwa is tall. He's very tall. It's a bit shocking that both of these guys weigh 160. He has a very nice jab. He has a good left hook. He has a good left uppercut. In my favorites folder here online, I have one of his fights, right? Might be his biggest fight. And you'll have an opportunity to see his offensive arsenal. But, I've given you the pros. Let's talk about the cons. Because every coin has two sides. His legs. Not a lot of lateral movement. Just not a lot. Right? You wonder what happens if he's in against another tall, powerful middleweight who flushes him out of the pocket and then follows him out of the pocket. Again, not a lot of lateral movement. Understand too, Koton Dokwa is unaccustomed to being the hunted. This is a guy with a 94% KO ratio. 94%. He's accustomed to hunting you. He's accustomed to being bigger than you. He's accustomed to softening you up with a jab and then throwing power punches. Well, one of the problems I have with him, tall guy, the power punches are mostly hooks. In other words, he doesn't have a lot of what I call ring coverage. There's no Deontay Wilder straight right hand, right? There's no Vladimir Klitschko straight right hand. Now, this is a guy who, while softening you up with a jab, has to then lunge in and get close to you to throw power shots. Let me also say, too, that 94% KO ratio comes with a caveat. It's uncertain what this guy's stamina would be like late in a fight. Right? That's uncertain, folks, because this guy is hardly ever been forced to go the distance. Also, in terms of experience, there isn't that much professional experience here. This guy has only had 17 pro fights. Also, for me, when I see a tall guy, I like to see a guy who maximizes his height, right? Who knows how to use height, use length, as I like to say. This guy, tall guy, is a slugger who likes to lean forward, right? I have a problem with that. An opponent has an easier time finding his head than if, let's say, he were a Vitaly Klitschko, a master at using length, who leaned back, who forced you to come way forward into his power shots just to find his head. Now let's talk about Demetrius Andre. As I said, I expect him to win the fight, but that's not how I'm betting it. Because I'm not going to lay a lot of money to win very little money. I want the leverage of betting on a mispriced underdog, right? While I expect Andre to win, again, let me repeat, the only bet I would recommend would be a small amount on the underdog as simply an odds play. Right? You're getting huge odds on Katan Dokwa. Right? If you have throwaway money, 
Not the mortgage payment, not the rent payment, but throwaway money. Not the car note, right? Not the money you use for food and water, but throwaway money. Then I would think about the underdog here, understanding that it's likely that you lose the funds. Let's just put it differently. I think um, Andre has about a 75% chance of winning the fight. The current odds give Katondokwa significantly less than 25% to win the fight. Now let's talk about Andre. And you need to look at Andre seriously because this guy is about to hit the upper levels of middleweight. Right? This is a guy who I think would beat Canelo if Canelo comes back down to middleweight. Right? Now Andre's a southpaw, and that's significant because he's up against an orthodox jabber. Understand the southpaw stands by itself should help him avoid Katandokwa's jab. Andre also has great balance. You'll notice he leans back, he leans forward, he's not stumbling around the ring. This is a guy who knows how to keep himself balanced even as he's leaning. He has great legs, he's a superior athlete, he can move around the ring, right? He is a rarity in today's game. This is a combination puncher, right? In other words, if you're a fan of Ray Leonard and you look at a Demetrius Andre fight and he lets his hands go, you're going to see something familiar. You're going to see a guy throwing six, seven, eight punches at a time. He's not a Floyd Mayweather pot shotter. He's not a Katan Dokwa jab hook. Right? No, this is a combination puncher. Right? The punches come at odd angles. He's a tall guy, but you'll notice at times it looks like he's throwing punches from his knees. Right? He throws punches from odd angles. He has ring coverage. In other words, why he'll get carried away at times with hooks? He can hit you from distance. I believe this gives him a distinct advantage on Katandokwa. He has an excellent left hook. He is excellent at timing. In other words, this is the guy who looks at you, right, while the action is ongoing. He doesn't get caught up in it. He looks at you. He's sequential. So, if he sees a sequence where he can throw punches, anticipate what you're throwing back, and then pivot in the pocket and continue to throw punches, that's what he's going to do. Right now, I found guys who are calm in the pocket. Guys who don't panic when the gunfight starts, when the bullets start flying, they tend to have a distinct advantage over their opponents. In fact, let me just say, one of the best things that Floyd Mayweather had going for him was the fact that Floyd never panicked in fights. He was always calm, right? Think Tom Brady. The pockets collapsing around him, Tom Brady's still looking downfield, right? He's not one of these young quarterbacks who is going to tuck the ball and try to run, you know, is going to panic, is going to hear footsteps before anyone's actually there. No. Demetrius Andre has that Floyd Mayweather, Tom Brady in the pocket type of awareness, right? The bullets are flying. This guy's not jumpy. He's calm, right? In many ways, he's like, dare I say it, Chris Eubank. If you look at that Avni Yildurum, Chris Eubank fight, same type thing, where Yildurum comes inside and Eubank's looking at him. The two guys start trading punches, and Eubank seems to be aware of every punch that's being thrown. Doesn't panic. Is focused on the punches he wants to land. That's Demetrius Andre. Now let's talk about the cons. 
right? Andre is not a great puncher, right? This is a little bit different than Ray Leonard. Ray Leonard can actually hurt you, right? Andre is a guy who really is only able to hurt you when you don't expect the punch. Right? He's excellent at throwing punches you don't expect. But when you expect the punch and you're braced for it, he can't hurt you. Right? He's not, to me, a blessed puncher. I understand there's a difference of opinion out there. I know he has a greater than 50% KO ratio. If you want to comment, if you want to disagree with any part of this video, I hope you do so in the comment section of this video. Right? Let me also say, too, that like most combination punchers, this guy is too much of a daredevil, right? Makes him an exciting fighter. But if you've bet money on a guy, you don't really want to see him in a gut fight. You want to see him doing on to others and then splitting, getting out of the pocket, getting away from danger. Right? This is the guy, again, he's a sequential fighter. This is the guy who starts the combination, right? This is the danger of betting on a combination puncher. He starts the combination, the other guy starts firing back. But if the combination puncher believes that that hook he plans to throw is the fifth punch in the combination, is going to hurt the other guy, He's going to linger in the pocket while he gets off the first four shots before that fifth shot. So Andre is a bit of a daredevil. That's the risk in this fight. I believe Andre is the superior talent. Right? But I believe Andre's a guy who's going to hang around the pocket a bit. And give a heavy-handed guy with a 94% KO ratio the chance to catch him on a counter. Right? Let's remember, Ray Leonard goes down against Donnie Lalonde. Let's remember, Ray Leonard went down earlier in his career. Right? Let's remember Ali, another guy who'd let his hands go and throw combinations. Goes down to Sonny Banks. Goes down to Henry Cooper. Right? These are guys Ali was a better fighter than. But when you're a combination puncher and you're sticking around, letting your hands go, you're taking far more risk than, let's say, a defense-first pot shotter like Floyd Mayweather. So let me just say, a guy like Andre, in my opinion, we're just thinking about hypothetical matchups here, would have a problem with Chris Eubank. Because understand, Andre would be around the pocket a bit too long, right? He'd give away some of his height. He'd be trading shots with another guy who is like Floyd, is like Tom Brady, with another guy who wants the gun fight, who thinks that in the middle of a gun fight, he can land an uppercut. That's who Chris Eubank is. Now, what I think is going to happen here is Andre is simply going to be too much for this opponent. I think this opponent's going to find that he can't land his jab. This opponent's going to start to get desperate. He's going to try to open up. That's when Andre's going to open up. And I'm expecting Andre to land a much higher volume of shots. I'm expecting Andre to hit this guy with you know, many different power shots from odd angles. I would not be surprised if Andre, who isn't a great puncher, doesn't get the KO here. Because this guy, a 94% KO ratio, based on the films I'm looking at, these hunter guys often have neglected defense in their development. Right? His opponent's 33 years old. He's hardwired at this point. I don't think he has the defensive skills to deal with a slick southpaw who's adept on his back foot and his front foot, who throws punches at odd angles, is a combination puncher. Understand, we talk about a lead puncher, we talk about a counter puncher, 
with a combination puncher, right? They'll lead with a combination. They'll also counter you with a combination. They're not throwing one punch at a time. I like the favorite here. If you like the favorite too, I think the fight's unbettable because you're just not getting great odds on Andre. Right? You're just not. Right? So even though I think Andre wins the fight, if you're interested in making money long term and you're one of the people who looks at fights and says, oh, this, this underdog has a 25% chance of winning, right? 25%, one in four chance of winning, and the casino is giving him less than a 10% chance of winning. If you're someone who bets percentages, I think the play here is the underdog with very light throwaway money. Don't expect to win this. I think the favorite wins the fight. I like Andre to win the fight. That's not how I'm betting it. I'm taking the underdog to win just with throwaway money. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. By the way, I thought Andre was going to beat Billy Joe Saunders. I personally feel, personal opinion, don't sue me for anything. I personally feel Billy Joe didn't want to fight Andre. Billy Joe had problems making weight. He was looking for a way out. He was looking for a way to join the 168-pound division. Right? Those are my thoughts. Anyway, I think Andre wins this fight. I'm betting it differently. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.